So you might have seen last week I was talking about my viewers' suggestions for great alternative guitar solos, whatever that means. And really it was just an excuse for me to talk about some weird guitar solos by some of my favourite guitar weirdos, or else just to talk about some great solos that were perhaps a little bit overlooked and not as well known as they should be. And I think the solo from this song falls into the latter category. It's a fabulous solo by Glenn Tilbrook. I was messing about with it this week, decided to learn it properly, and I'm really pleased I did. There's loads of nice stuff in here which I'm going to share with you. And the main focus of this video is going to be on the solo, but I will also talk you through the chords and the rhythm guitar parts, which are great as well. But let me start by playing the solo for you. <laughs> solo that is. It's from 1980, the Squeeze album Argy Bargy, and I think it was released as a single as well, played by Glenn Tilbrook. And we're flying from one end of the neck to the other. We're playing over quite a difficult chord progression. And we've got lots of great stuff in here. It's melodic, it's memorable, also quite virtuosic and technical in places. So it's clearly going to be a bit of a challenge and a commitment if you want to learn a solo like this one note for note. But if you like the solo, I say go ahead because you'll get an awful lot out of studying a solo such as this one. So let's take a look at what's going on. So this is a great sophisticated pop song in the key of E. And I'm going to start by talking about the chords for those of you who want to learn the entire song. Maybe you want to sing and play at the same time. But even for those of you who just want to learn the solo, I strongly suggest learning the chord progression as well. The solo is played over the verse chords to the song. And you can't really learn or understand this solo without knowing the chords that you're playing over. So the song kicks off with this single note part played by the guitar and the bass. And I think they're in harmony. I think the bass is playing a third below the guitar, so the bass will be playing this. Which gives you this kind of... Um, uh, how can I do this? Um, that's it. That kind of sound with the guitar and bass in harmony, so a cool sound. Uh, what the guitar is doing, the actual notes we've got, it's starting on an E here, D sharp, C sharp and B, and then another group of four notes coming down from the D sharp as far as the A sharp. Probably a little bit of palm muting for that part as well. Then we're into the verse, which goes something like this. So I think Tilbrook is mostly just playing power chord shapes, and then the overall harmony is suggested or filled out by what the keyboards are doing. So we're starting off with a B power chord here, and it's a, a B major sound that is implied. And then we've got this little shape here. So if you just drop your first finger down to an A sharp from the B5 power chord, and you've really got an F sharp over A sharp. That's the implied harmony from what the keyboards are doing. So it's really a first inversion F sharp major chord that you've got. It's quite a good trick if you just drop down the root of a power chord and it strongly implies that kind of sound. So we're going from a B to an F sharp over an A sharp and then to an F sharp minor. Again this is implied by the keyboards. Tilbrook's just playing a power chord here and then similar to the intro here. It's that same little riff but we're playing it a bit higher up the neck. So we're starting on a, an A note here. And that takes us to an E chord or E power chord. G sharp up to A. And then we've got this same shape. I've played it down here but it's the same thing here. It's that F sharp over A sharp and then it takes us back to B again and the verse goes round on itself one more time. So it's a great chord progression. And then 
just on the repeat at the end we've got that F sharp over A sharp sound and then we're just taking that up two frets and it's functioning in the same same kind of way as a inversion which is pulling you towards the first chord of the bridge which is C sharp minor and often that chord is functioning as a five chord pulling your ear back to one and then the bridge is quite simple we just got C sharp minor A E to B so that's the bridge or the pre-chorus and then the chorus Really just E, B, A, and E, and we're adding in that kind of rock and roll boogie thing where you're rocking back and forth between the fifth and the sixth, and then it repeats. And at the end of the chorus, just A, B, C sharp minor. And that's about it for the rhythm guitar parts for the song. So beautiful chord progression, but really the guitar part is just bashing out those chords, just using power chords, maybe a bit of palm muting as well, all eighth note downstrokes. So I'm going to take you through the solo lick by lick, and I'm going to try and emphasize how what Tilbrook is playing relates to the chord progression. I think this is so important. If you don't understand the chord progression, then you'll just be memorizing a load of fret numbers and tab numbers and you won't really understand what's going on. Now we're in the key of E major, we're playing over the verse chords and I think it's an interesting progression to play over and I'm not sure exactly what Tilbrook would be thinking here. Uh, he's probably just using his ear to find nice melodies but you can think E major for the most part, so E major scale and related pentatonic type scales but then when one of these more unusual non-diatonic chords crops up that's where you might have to adjust the E major scale. You might have to just step outside that scale momentarily just to accommodate those non-diatonic chords. So it's interesting to see how he navigates the challenges of playing over this kind of chord progression. So the opening lick goes like this. So this is played over the, the B major going down to the F sharp over A sharp and we're starting on a B note here and it's just climbing up a B major pentatonic scale. Nice slide up and down here. And then coming to rest on this F sharp note here. So hitting hitting chord tones. This chord here, this F sharp major or the F sharp over A sharp is not diatonic to the key of E major. So he's just hitting the chord tone there. Um, Next little lick. So this lick here is played over the F sharp minor and sliding again on the B string here and emphasizing the root note of the F sharp minor. And then we've got this. So this is just like we had in the rhythm guitar part. This is doubling the bass guitar part, but we played it down an octave in the rhythm part. This is the same thing. So we're seeing already that this is a very well thought out and well constructed solo. I imagine it's quite a composed solo. It's got lots of nice melodies and then at certain spots it locks in with what the band is doing and then it goes off into more licks type stuff as well. So after this lick Climbing up the neck, we're up into the 12th position. And this is played over the E chord here, so. So once again, emphasizing chord tones, you could see this as E major pentatonic, I think. But resolving to the B there, which is the, the fifth of the chord that we're playing over. This is a really nice little lick here. So this is where we're playing over the G sharp major chord. Again, it's a non-diatonic chord. So what Tilbrook is doing, just thinking melody, thinking chord tones here. So maybe thinking out of a, a triad shape, but he's hitting, hitting the third of the G sharp major and just hammering into that from one fret below. So you've got that flat third 
to major third, kind of a bluesy sound. Almost a jazzy lick, that one. And ending on the root. And then we've got this blazingly fast lick. And all this played over the A chord. And it's really just a pentatonic lick. I'm thinking E major pentatonic. Although it's got these extra notes in there. I suppose that's called the E bluegrass scale, I think, or it's the C sharp minor uh, pentatonic, C sharp blues scale. That shares the same notes with the E major pentatonic scale. Uh, I'm not going to take you through every single note here because that will get a little bit tedious, but we're starting off on the third string with a little slide up and back. And although it's blazingly fast, it's made a bit easier by the fact that there's lots of slurring and hammer-ons and pull-offs happening in this one. And that's where we descend. We're descending on the A string. And then we're sliding up again. A little kind of double stop shape. as this B note is. Let me just play that really slowly for you. I hope this video will be enough for you to grab the notes. Then we're into the second half of the solo. We're back to the B major chord. this quite simple B major pentatonic lick so sliding up to this D sharp note another slide and ending on the B so lots of nice pentatonic stuff in this solo and it's worth pointing out that we're in the key of E major but you have in fact got three major pentatonics available to you in that key clearly you've got E major pentatonic but B major pentatonic is also in there and A major pentatonic. So all three of those are available to you and Tilbrook seems to be using a lot of E major pentatonic and also B major pentatonic. And all of those notes are found within the key of E major. So we've just had this lick. And then we've got this. So just a bit of melody sliding on the B string. That's played over the F sharp over A sharp and then over the F sharp minor just more melody this is mostly on the top string and then a descending pentatonic phrase so this time coming down the B major pentatonic just with that extra note thrown in there Hitting an E note there, that's the root of the chord that we're heading to. Next phrase is that. So playing over E, most of that is chord tones or it's E major pentatonic. And then the solo ends with some double stop sixth shapes. So we've got that playing over the G sharp chord here. So again, we're hitting chord tones here. We've got the fifth and the third of that G sharp chord. So it's just six played on the high E and G strings. Is it the eighth fret, ninth, eleventh? And I would tend to play these six with a bit of hybrid picking, so pick and middle finger. But I think Tilbrook just plays all of those with the pick, so do that you just have to make sure that you're muting the B string so you don't want that to be ringing so just leaning into the B string and muting it somehow and then we got this so very similar idea played over the A chord and then last bit of the solo 
four six this time at the sixth eighth and ninth frets and again just hitting chord tones of the of the chords that we're playing over so that's the solo amazing solo let me play it through for you in time and reasonably slowly that's going to be enough for you to be able to get this together if I am going a bit fast for you or if you want a bit more detail then do check out my tab I've tabbed this out I've tried to make it as accurate as I can and that's going to be available up on my patreon page for those of you who are interested let me talk about the gear that I'm using today and I'm not sure what Tilbrook would have used on the recording for this I've watched some live footage and he seems to use quite a few different types of guitars so I just went for my Strat which seems to work for this song and this is an American 60s reissue Strat it's quite a new model of Strat. I'm using the neck pickup today and I'm going into my Vox AC30 and the amp itself is running quite clean then I've just got a couple of pedals I've got an MXR Dynacomp and this is one of the script logo reissues which I think is quite faithful to the original 70s design and I'm also using the J Rocket Archer overdrive pedal not really for overdrive here it's still essentially a clean sound that I've got here but I find that that pedal helps just to warm up the sound a bit and to push the amp a little bit harder. So the guitar going straight into the AC30 sounds like this. And then if I put the compressor on... So I haven't got very extreme settings on the compressor, it's just adding a little bit of sustain. I turn on the Archer overdrive pedal so you can hear it's just giving me a bit of extra volume and it seems to add a bit of warmth to the sound as well and what I'll probably end up doing is adding a little bit of reverb and maybe a touch of delay to the mix when I'm mixing the audio to this track so probably some plate reverb and then just a subtle bit of stereo delay just to add a bit of stereo image to the guitar so that's it for this video if you are going to take on the challenge of learning this solo good luck with it hope you enjoy it and as usual the tab and backing track is going to be up on my patreon page you can sign up there pay what you like and get access to all of my tabs and thanks to everyone for watching I shall see you next week for something completely different bye bye